Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again, and uh, this morning I'm going to talk some about the missing uh, second bicuspids. Over, I mean, these are permanent uh, teeth that they're missing. Uh, I'm a general dentist that's a, a member of the American Orthodontic Society. I'm board certified in that, and I've uh, done nothing but orthodontics for the last 42 years, and I did a lot before that. Uh, if you're a general or pediatric dentist, we want to encourage you to to join the American Orthodontic Society. It is a wonderful organization, and we have teachers that we can uh, teach you and uh, know how to really do orthodontics. So I'll go ahead and start on this uh, case. Now, if you've got a young person and they're missing their lower second bicuspids and it should they should have been in a good way to back uh, and they're just not there no evidence of them at all this is a good solution for that to that where you'll uh, take the second deciduous molar and just uh, take it cut it in half and you remove the distal half and you do a pulpotomy on the mesial half and keep it and that holds the upper second deciduous molar up and keeps it from dropping into the space and if it drops in there then the six year molar can't drift forward and you won't close the space and then after the tooth drifts in there then you remove that mesial half and it'll go ahead and drift all the way up to the uh, bicuspid. So I'm going to show this in a case. Now the pulpotomy was done uh, incorrectly and it did not work, but the, the way to do this worked fine. So uh, here we go, this young man. Uh, he's a real neat guy, and uh, this was a easy thing to do, and the teeth are he has lots of other problems, but you can go in here early if there's not something you have to do is uh, interceptive stuff. Just do this and leave him alone and let it drift for a year or two or whatever. Just keep an eye on him, and when the six-year motor gets right up there close and the rest of the deciduous teeth are ready to go, well, then you, you can start the final part of the orthodontics. Okay, uh, I'll go through some of these slides and just show you where the teeth are missing. Now this is after we had worked on him for a while and we came in and this tooth was going way on back here somewhere uh, and we cut the tooth in two. Except I didn't do it. Uh, somebody, they sent him off and they did a terrible uh, pulpotomy, they didn't do it good at all, and the pulpotomy gave trouble and drained, and I can see it on the x rays after a while. But it still worked. Now, this six year molar drifted all the way in here during that time. Now, once this tooth gets here, the tooth up above, you see, would be something like that. Now, it'll rest on this, and it'll still drift until this six-year molar will end up right over in this area. And it's interesting to watch that. You don't have to do much of anything to the patient, just see them, and this will drift together. When the rest of the deciduous teeth are gone, you can, well, as soon as this tooth gets here, the six-year molar's there, you can take this rest of the deciduous tooth out and then the two molars will come forward like that. So uh, here the case on uh, the cephalometric picture, and you can get some idea there's no bicuspid under there, but that's not a, a good x-ray to look at it, but you can sure see it on a panorex. Now, <clears throat> this young man had some other uh, problem, little problem like he needed to get this 
kind of a supernumerary tooth removed right up here or it's uh, something to do with the deciduous uh, lateral but anyway it needs to be taken out and let this tooth kind of come up with this right over here there is no lateral on this side you see uh, no permanent lateral these are baby teeth so we're going to come together with the cuspids and bring everything forward up here now here they we're going to go in and cut this in two and go down and fill this canal or pack it real hard with very stiff zecoxide eugenol and the guy didn't know how to do that this was an old surgeon that was now the general dentist that sent me the patient wouldn't do it I tried to tell him how to do it I didn't get to tell the old surgeons and so he uh, thinking he's an old surgeon and an MD that he knew everything and I'm sure he charged them a big fee to <laughs> do the pulpotomy improperly okay here let me go back and see if I don't have anything all right here it is they still hadn't uh, done this but they're going to take this tooth out you see and this one is missing right here and they'll do a s reduction of some of these others kind of like the that uh, slicing technique here we still haven't removed the tooth uh, all right here they've done the the pulp out of me they took the deciduous tooth out or that uh, uh, portly undeveloped lateral there out and uh, they sectioned that did what they thought was a pulp out of me but you got to pack this stuff down in the canal and you make it real stiff and you pack it like you would uh, enamel down into the canal uh, and it works I've never had one fail but this these did fail but still the tooth drifted into the hole now this little part right here held this tooth up kept it from dropping down here if we had extracted that whole tooth to start with like this then this tooth would have drifted down and this would run into it and it wouldn't drift we wouldn't close up there at all so we held this until this tooth gets this uh, this is your six year molar gets over in this hole and then you can extract the, this portion of the uh, deciduous tooth but you gotta wait now this one has not they haven't come over there yet you see so you hold that up and this will drift forward let me go to the next slide here and you see now this tooth has drifted in here so you can extract that and this one is drifted in and so the six year molar is holding this up now so you can take this out the six year molar will continue to drift over till it comes over against this one and it'll be almost parallel just drift on young people now after they get older and uh, they've lost a lot of these deciduous teeth you can't do that you just have to extract the whole tooth but then you have to put braces or something to hold the upper teeth up or do some other uh, retainer that holds it up now you can watch it with the remove these out now take these away now the tooth will continue to drift I don't know that we show all these panoraxes this is number five and here's another okay it did show it enough now these teeth are together here not only that the second molar has drifted in behind underneath this to catch this one and this one now this tooth he does not have wisdom teeth or uh, that that may be a wisdom tooth developing I'm not sure uh, 
this tooth will come down. There's nothing right there now for it to touch, but this will come on rest on that. The rest of this will head on part of that and part of this when it comes in. Okay, this is further down the line, and uh, we have no lower wisdom teeth which I don't think he would have room for him anyway to set in here. Uh, so this tooth may come down and may come in in co contact with the tissue back here and it may have to be removed but leave it in there to see if you lost one of these teeth you could or any of these teeth you could move that into place there so just leave it for a while. You might be able to use it or might need to use it. All right, that's uh, pretty much, see, he's missing these lateral teeth right in there. So we'd have to shape his cuspids up uh, along the end of treatment. Okay, we come in and put arch wire in there and kind of straighten that up. And I guess we've got most of the deciduous teeth out now so we ready just to start this second uh, phase of this and uh, doesn't look like we did much with the deciduous I mean the second uh, well the the upper cuspids if you're missing the laterals so we put a little pad in here and this kind of hold the thing in a certain height while we let these other teeth erupt down to that. Let's go back and take that out. Now here are the models where we uh, had the half teeth on them you see. Now that's, I think we chipped that model, that tooth is not scarred up there like that. Yeah, you see. Now we'll go ahead and close that the rest of the way. Up above, it's finished it up something like that. And down below. So we're missing two teeth on the bottom in there, and we're missing two laterals. So we kind of let that balance out, and we're also missing lower wisdom teeth. So the upper wisdom teeth aren't going to count. So this is going to be all the teeth that this young man has, unless you put some implants in there for to catch the upper wisdom tooth which you'd have to have some room for that so here he is at the end or this is him that's not the end of the case but i hope you see what we're doing here it's removing the second deciduous molar in sections to make it hold the upper tooth up until the six the lower six-year molar moves into the space. And I hope you learned something from this. I wanted to dedicate this uh, video to uh, Dr. Ed Gonzalez, who is one of our leading members, and he's also uh, he teaching and leading in a podcast for the American Orthodontic Society. He's put on about four and hope you get to listen to his podcast. Dr. Ed Gonzalez, he's a pediatric dentist uh, right out of Syracuse, uh, Florida. So I'll say goodbye and we'll end it there. Thank you very much.